What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with UFC is losing money when Conor McGregor fights. Conor McGregor has continued to campaign for a fight in recent months while fans, media members and his peers all continue to wonder when the UFC will book his highly anticipated return bout. After previously telling media members in Saudi Arabia at the Nganu vs Fury fight that he was more than ready to return, McGregor then indicated this past weekend that his patience with the UFC is wearing thin. The way Sugar Sean O'Malley sees things, there may be a reason behind why the promotion won't book McGregor a fight. He spoke on his Timbo Sugar show. There. Yeah, we sure freaking are, man. <laughs> I, you know what's crazy is Connor's supposedly just begging for a fight. Give me a fight. Let me fight, daddy. UFC? I like, said his, Connor says his patience wearing thin over UFC inactivity. I wonder if he's make, making so much money per fight that it's like really just not that beneficial to the UFC. Like they're losing money when he fights. I wonder if like his deal structured in a way like, it's like f Of course, through the recent class action lawsuit against the UFC, it has been revealed that McGregor was paid just under $20 million for nine fights in the UFC. Given those figures, it seems unlikely that the UFC loses money when he fights, when taking into account the money they make from tickets and pay-per-view buys. With McGregor's team reportedly pushing for a UFC 300 return, it'll be interesting to see what the new year has in store for the former champ champ. Next up, let's take a look at Hamza Chimaev called out for inactivity. At one point in time, Hamza Chimaev was not only one of the most feared welterweight contenders on the UFC's roster, he was one of the most feared contenders on the entire roster. After signing with the promotion and rattling off three straight victories in the span of two months, Chimaev's stock was at an all-time high. Since returning to the Octagon in 2021, following a battle with COVID that saw him consider retirement, Chimaev has not been able to maintain the same pace of schedule. After a recent win over Kamar Usman, which came over a year after his win over Kevin Holland, Josh Thompson isn't sold on boars. He spoke on the previously mentioned Weighing In podcast about the streaking contender. I'm not, I'm, I said this the last time I saw him fight, I'm not sold on him yet. Exactly. I'm not sold on Kamzat Chimaev. Everyone's like, oh, exactly. you're stupid. You're being a hater. You're I'm like, no. Look, I don't care what you guys say. I've been in the fight game a long, long time. Fighters come, fighters go. They explode into the scene, and guess what? Then they linger around for a little bit, hoping to get back on track, and some of them never do, and some have a resurgence. While Chimaev is hoping to get a crack at the winner of the upcoming Strickland versus Duplessis fight, many fans want to see him fight a true middleweight before getting a crack at the belt. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at Dana White getting replaced? After infamously slapping his wife at a New Year's Eve party last year, there were repeated calls for UFC CEO Dana White to either resign or be removed from his position. Neither wound up happening, with White stating that any punishment or time off imposed on him would only be hurting the UFC. As it turns out, that wasn't the first time there was talk of White potentially being replaced. With the ongoing Lee vs. Zufa class action lawsuit against the UFC, a number of documents have been made public, including an email from WME exec Brent Richard back in 2016. In the email, which was sent prior to a deal being finalized, Richard listed the five biggest concerns for WME regarding the purchase of Zufa, with number five simply stating, Dana White need to develop a retention, transition, and ultimately replacement plan for Dana. In addition to the bullet point regarding White, the exec also noted several important points, including the two class action lawsuits against the UFC and CTE, which has continued to receive more and more attention over the years. Of course, since then, WME has acquired Zufa, with Dana White also notably signing a contract extension in 2019. Given that the company stuck by him despite the massive scandal that surrounded him earlier this year, it seems as though White likely isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Next up, let's take a look at MMA Community Goes Off on Dana White for Fight. Despite Tom Aspinall currently holding interim gold in the heavyweight division, the UFC seems to be moving forward with the plan to have Jon Jones fight Stipe Miocic when he returns to the octagon. The fight, and White in turn for trying to sell it, have continued to receive criticism from the MMA community, given that a title unification fight should be the promotion's first priority. In addition, as one fan pointed out this week, by the time Jones returns, Miocic will have been out for a whole three years. He wrote, Tell me this isn't crazy. The UFC trying to sell that Stipe Jones fight when he's 41 and will not have fought for three years. Another fan agreed, writing, When John runs over old Stipe, people gonna be acting it's the same Stipe that fought during his reign. Watch, LMAO. 
As another fan pointed out, Miocic's latest performance was a loss, making his case for a title shot even more puzzling. Also coming off a loss, biggest robbery ever for Tom Aspinall. As another pointed out, both Jones and Miocic are expected to retire after the fight. The fan wrote, Yep, a fight no one wants to see and John gonna walk away. Tom is the real champ. Another added, It was crazy the first time they tried to sell it to us. The ranking system is not for the fans, and so they have a bracket system of how to pay the fighters. That's why I think we see people sitting on their rankings and worried about fighting people below them so much. Another questioned why White and the UFC are handpicking fights for Jones after White once famously stated that Jones will never headline another pay-per-view event back in 2016, following a failed drug test that resulted in the cancellation of his fight with Daniel Cormier. The fan wrote, The special treatment for Juice Jones has to stop. He's a low-life steroid cheating criminal. How can he be allowed to handpick an opponent like Stipe and give him a title shot, magically skip over an interim champ, when Stipe is coming off a KO loss and zero wins in over three years? Despite the outrage, Dana White seems completely unfazed by the criticism. Next, let's take a look at Aljamain Sterling Reveals Bad News After being knocked out by Sugar Sean O'Malley, Aljamain Sterling recently cemented his move to featherweight by signing to fight Calvin Cater at UFC 300. The fight has divided the MMA community, with some fans of the mindset that the matchup will make Sterling's featherweight debut a tough one, given Cater's takedown defense. Ahead of the fight, Sterling shared a concerning update on his training during a recent episode of the Weekly Scraps podcast, where he revealed that he's still feeling the effects of two months off. Right now, I'm just tired. Like, I, I do like one to two rounds of striking and I'm exhausted. Mm. I'm also moving around, trying to do what I do when I'm lighter. But those eight to nine weeks of just drinking just about every single oh, day and doing God. hookah, <laughs> hookah nonstop, staying up late at night. Now, you went crazy. You went crazy. It definitely took a toll on my lungs, man. Yeah. So I still feel like I'm battling back from that and trying to gain all that. Even today, we sparred. I feel like I had a relatively solid day, except when I went with Julian and Rosa. As Sterling went on to indicate, one of the biggest adjustments with moving up in weight is the height difference between bantamweights and featherweights. After sparring with six foot one featherweight Julian and Rosa, the former champ knows that the height difference associated with a jump up in weight is nothing to scoff at. With his featherweight debut set to take place in April, it'll be interesting to see how the former champ handles the unique set of challenges moving up in weight will bring. Next, let's take a look at Umar Nurmagomedov frustrated with UFC. Conor McGregor isn't the only fighter on the UFC roster growing frustrated with the promotion for failing to book him a fight. After being forced to withdraw from a scheduled UFC Fight Night Nashville headliner with Corey Sanhagen, Umar Nurmagomedov has begun to grow impatient. After posting a photo on Instagram earlier this month, tagging Dana White and telling him that he wants to fight anyone willing to accept, Nurmagomedov has now made another post, voicing his frustration with White and the UFC's matchmakers this time on the platform formerly known as Twitter, writing, and what I have to do if nobody don't want to fight? In another post, he wrote, hey Dana White, even me tired to hear, no one want to fight with Umar, make someone fight with me, and massage for Bantamweight 17 February if you not busy and want to fight, let know. In a separate post, he also wrote, please someone explain to me why no one calls my name for fight, Bantamweight in UFC. Of course, there was hope among the MMA community that the UFC would rebook the previously scheduled fight between Corey Sanhagen and Nurmagomedov for the new year. However, the Sandman has since indicated that he has little interest in fighting down in the rankings. Back in May, Dana White notably indicated that, much like Nurmagomedov has claimed, the promotion is struggling to find him an opponent. Given that, should the UFC wind up giving Sanhagen a top-ranked opponent for his next fight, there's no telling who Nurmagomedov could wind up making his return against. Next up, let's take a look at Colby Covington's next UFC fight. After a lopsided defeat to Leon Edwards, Colby Covington was quick to dismiss a potential fight with undefeated contender Shavkat Rachmanov while speaking to media members backstage. Instead, Covington took aim at Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, earning him plenty of criticism from the MMA community. The way MMA vet Josh Thompson sees things, if Covington doesn't want to fight Rachmanov, there's another up-and-coming contender he could fight. He spoke on he and Big John McCarthy's Weighing In podcast. I'm going to go Colby Covington versus uh, Sean Brady. I, I want to see Sean Brady, but I just don't think that Colby wants to fight someone that young, that, it, uh, that with that much hype around him, that much confidence. McCarthy agreed, suggesting at this point in Covington's career, he likely won't want to fight someone who matches up so well against him like Brady does. Sean Brady possesses too many difficult attributes for Colby Covington to deal with. He can wrestle. Mm -hmm. His stand-up is good. He does have power in his hands. And, and it's Colby's biggest problem is he doesn't possess that 
you know, that next level, shifting gears into that next level of power. Stephen Thompson, who Covington called out following their UFC 296 losses, notably indicated after the fight that he believes he suffered a foot injury against Shafkat Rachmanov, meaning if Covington wants to stay in the mix, he may have to fight another ranked opponent depending on how long Thompson is on the sidelines. Colby Covington went off on Patty Pimblett on a recent podcast calling him out for fighting nobodies and claiming that he will never make it to the top 30 in his division. Here's what Colby had to say about Patty. You know, Patty, they gave him two heroin had addicts to fight back to back and he didn't even beat the last one. He fought this guy, Jared Gordon, a legit heroin addict. And he didn't even win the fight. The world knew he lost that fight. You know, if he didn't have a bull cut and an accent, nobody would care about Patty. <laughs> That's the only reason they like him is a bull so, cut and accent. So He's not even a good fighter. He'll never be a top 30 fighter. The closest he'll ever get to fighting for a world title is if he got on his knees and came and sniffed my jockstrap. <laughs> facts <laughs> but he's a good marketer That's the truth how about he's a good market he just has a bull cut in the accent he's not even about a marketer. The, accent, so the mma community is going off on nina drama for faking big fight news and claiming that dana white will be announcing big fights when in reality she was just helping dana promote his power slap league event she posted this video on twitter today is my birthday and today dana said that we can break the big fight news at 5 p.m uh, pacific time um, this is, it says Dana White, because this is Dana White's office, and we're going to break big news, fight news, today at 5.50 p.m. here at Dana White's office. Then later trolled fans and posted this for the actual announcement. Break the big fight news. We're here at his office at UFC headquarters. We're about to go inside right now, so come on, let's go. All right, Dana, let's break the news. What's up, everybody? It's season two, Road to the title. Yes. Season two, Road to the Title, episode seven. It's taped and free on Rumble. That's right, it's taped and free on Rumble, so make sure you check it out tonight. That's right, check it out tonight. Taped and free on Rumble. Happy holidays! Needless to say, fans were furious with her. Here's how the community reacted to the fake news. We realize what Dana's doing, right? He's always hated actual sports journalists who do their job and ask hard questions. So he's turning social media influencers into his journalists and MMA media because they won't ask real questions as to not ruin their reputation with him. All respect to him for using them as a marketing tool towards a younger demographic. All respect to them for navigating this new journey and capitalizing on a fantastic opportunity being presented to them. Nothing against either party. Party. But don't let them pull a wool over your eyes. There's a reason journalists at pressers don't ask about fighter pay, pension plans, health insurance, or ongoing court cases. Ask the wrong questions and you'll be blackballed. Nina, this failed miserably. This was lame, unfunny. You're walking on thin ice with MMA fans. You don't want to be the next schmo. Don't forget, Dana pushed the schmo too. Then when Dana realized the mass majority of MMA fans couldn't stand him, he tossed him overboard. Isn't it obvious she's getting paid by the UFC? Come on, she gets the best access to all the fighters. Never beating the industry plant allegations. Any hate from here on out towards her is valid in my eyes. Top comments. Sean Strickland has a swimmer's body and swimmer's cardio. Not surprised he's trying to put on some more muscle for the Drakus fight. That is exactly what he should do. Sean already had decent size, but you could tell he wasn't lifting. Looks like he's finally lifting some weights. Watching Justin and Islam talk back and forth on the internet, knowing that it's their manager the whole time. O'Malley vs. Sanhagen would be the most exciting fight by a mile. He's put in the work, fought all the tough fights, and signed up to fight Umar, who was number 11, and nobody wanted that fight. I thought Corey got the better of TJ on damage as well. I hope it comes to fruition. Make sure to leave a comment, and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.